建，它是呃 My Society 呃来呃台湾。那其实我们在两年前的时候 ，My Society 的朋友也已经来了，而且还一次来三位。所以就是说，我们其实知道说 My Society 花了非常多的时间去跟全世界各种各样子的类似 G 零 V 这样子的 Civic Tech 的社群交流。那他们所开发出来的东西，呃，像 Say It 或者 Fix My Street 或者所有这些东西，其实在全球包含在台湾都有非常多人使用。那每一次这个有这种国际合作的时候呢 j a n 就会是第一个这个回信的的这个人，所以他是就是 My Society 对于这个全世界的一个 Ambassador 吧，对的一个大使。那所以他今天会来跟我们分享关于 Every Politician 的呃一个工作。那时间也刚好到了，所以我想我们就随时大家记得、哦、有问题要提的话，就可以在 Slido 上面提。那我们就鼓掌欢迎 j a n 谢谢。Hi everyone.、Um, as Audrey said, I'm Jen. I'm here from My Society in the UK.、Um, we were here two years ago for the. Sorry, you'd think I'd be better at this. My husband is a sound engineer, but apparently not.、Um, <laughs> so yeah, we were here two years ago for the first ever、um, Gov Zero Summit, and I'm really proud to be back again, representing My Society again,、um, talking about something slightly different, although still related to the populist movement. <laughs> So,、um, as my colleague Dave, who was here last time, would say,、um, all good things start with a story, and every politician is no exception. So, I will start this session today by telling you the story of every politician.、Um, about two years ago, Tony Bowden, who is now a product manager at My Society, wanted to create a tool、um, that would allow people to compare the voting records for elected representatives across different legislatures around the world. To do that. Of course, you need the details of who is standing in what position, where,、um, and he was like, "Well, surely that data is going to be available. You know, that that's going to be available in a standardised, open source format.、Um, it could be easily used, and that's got to be somewhere. I mean, open data has been on this agenda for what, like, seems like hundreds of years,、um, <laughs> and so, and this particular data would be so useful for so many projects." So I guess you're not going to be surprised if I tell you that he didn't find it. So that got Tony to thinking. The other people out there have got to be having the same frustrations as he is,、um, trying to build tools and finding that that first chunk of their time has to be spent looking for, then cleaning up, and then inputting data. So why not do something to fix that? And that's when every politician was born. So the aim of every politician is to collect and curate data about every politician in every legislature of the world. The key thing about every politician is that this data has to be consistently formatted. Notice that I don't say it has to be in a particular standard. Sorry, James. <laughs>、um, though we are using a constrained subset of the Popolo standard. Tony's point has always been that if the data is consistent, then it's much easier to reuse. By having this data in a consistent format, all that effort and enthusiasm which people have for building really interesting projects can be harnessed and channeled to their real area of expertise, rather than finding the base layer of data that they need. So you can get on with the valuable stuff that helps change the world, while every politician can give you the initial data to build upon to do that.、Um, so currently, we have data for about. 86% of legislatures around the world. The remaining ones, which you can find if you go to everypolitician.org, they're generally in places where there's either no data available online or there's no confirmed government.、Um, and like those countries in red, those are the ones that we don't have yet. So if you if you have data for them, then please do come and talk to me about that.、Um, so the data is available for download in. Um, JSON and CSV format. There is no database and there is no API.、Um, and before everyone like gasps in shock and starts asking me why, we have really good reasons for doing this. So imagine that you're a journalist, or you're a private detective, or you're a student,、um, or maybe even an artist. You can still open a CSV file. You still know what a CSV file is,、um, and you can start using that data. It's accessible to pretty much everyone if it's in one of these two formats. And that's not the case if that's if it's an API.、Uh, 
So to get hold of the data, we run scrapers every day. The majority of these were created by us, and we check the pull requests that come in each morning, and we merge them. Um, originally, we really wanted to get other people uh, writing scrapers and like pulling in data for us, and some did. We had a really um, positive week at the Global Legislative Openness Week in Georgia. Sorry, I find legislative a really difficult word to say. Um, <laughs> so. I have to be very slow when saying that one. Um, yeah, we had uh, the Glow Week in Georgia run by the NDI. We had a really good week there. Um, we got about 10 to 20 people helping us get every politician from about 50 countries up to 200. Um, and we had uh, people contributing scrapers. They were telling us where data was um, that we could find and we could scrape ourselves. Um, they were helping us clean things up. So, so that was super, super positive. Um, but like, in the long term, writing and keeping scrapers up to date, it's, there's not much benefit for people for doing that for like pretty much no return. So like, instead, we ask people just to tell us and show us where the data is, and then we'll go and pull that into the consistent format that every politician needs. And there's even a bot, which I'm going to show you now, um, who blogs its trials and tribulations on Medium every day. So this, this was drawn by my colleague Dave, who is sadly not here, but it's the lovely bot. Um, okay, so we're collecting a range of information. At the moment, we can only accept certain types of data, um, which mainly relate to biographical information, uh, social media accounts, legisl legislative details, um, like party affiliations and such like, um, and contact details. We're hoping that we're going to be able to expand this further in the future. Um, and make the source richer and more useful to all kinds of organizations, um, academics and technology groups, but currently we can only work with what we can pull in. Um, and there's a list, if you go onto everypolitician.org um, and look at the kind of how you can help out section, there's a list of what data we're looking for and, and kind of what format it needs to be in. Um, and we're not just interested in, in current data, historical data is also super immensely useful to us. So if for example, you had historical data for Taiwan dating back to, I don't know, like the 1700s, we would be so excited to get hold of that data in a format that we could use. So please do talk to me about that. Um, so what do we use this for? I've already spoken about Tony's dream of a voting comparison site for every legislature in the world. So that's one thing that we're working on at My Society. Um, and we're doing that with the help of Jumpstart Georgia and John Handler in Ireland. And this is going to be loosely based on the UK's They Work For You model. Open Australia, via Open North, <laughs> um, contributed heavily to the data for Ukraine in every politician so that they could build a site similar to the Australian They Vote For You site tracking legislative votes in Ukraine. And this is the site here. It's called Rada For You, and Hanari is sitting right there if you want to talk to him about it. Um, we also have created a simple parliamentary monitoring site that can go live using a combination of Jekyll, Every Politician Data, Prose.io to edit, and Bootstrap themes. Um, and that can literally be up and running in about six hours. The first example of this that we have is um, a relaunch of Parliament Watch in Uganda. And there's two other sites here which are also running off it. Um, it's Kuvakazim in Zimbabwe and Shine Your Eye in Nigeria. So not only that, but with the contact details of politicians included in the database, it now takes only one click to set up a site to publicly write to elected representatives. Oxfam did something similar to this in Australia. Um, using the Every Politician data, they built a tool that allowed people to send public online messages to their representatives about climate change. Um, and this is the site that they built. With all of this data, it's so much easier to cross-reference cross facts and really hold your politicians to account. So an example of this, in Ghana, the parliamentary monitoring site, which is built on My Society Tools, um, a deck row, they released a report on MPs' attendance. And there's a law in Ghana which basically states that um, MPs have to attend a certain percentage of sessions every year. And a deck row did some investigative journalism work, and they found out that um, 125 MPs 
were legally able to be sacked because of absenteeism. And that's like a pretty strong case for using this kind of data for knowing who your politicians are and being able to cross-reference and, and find out whether they're actually doing the jobs that they're supposed to be doing. And at the crux of it, that's the reason we care so much about providing this data for everywhere in the world, including historically. Because imagine being able to look at the gender data um, and the representation, gender representation of politicians in different legislatures across the globe and then compare them. And then imagine being able to look at that across a, a number of years. So you can go look back at, for example, like in Taiwan, you could say, okay, there are this many females and there are this many males and there are this many of other genders in our parliament. And then you can go back across history and look and compare and see whether there's been any change. With the outcomes from tools based on every politician like gender balance, you can do this. So like, imagine if you took that data that you had for Taiwan and that gender data that you had, and then you looked at, for example, um, access to information laws and when they were passed and what balance of gender you had in the, in the parliament there. And then imagine if you could compare that across different countries as well and see if there's a correlation between uh, a higher ratio of different genders to greater things like access to information um, and like freedom of speech and that kind of information. That's the kind of stuff that researchers should be really excited about. Um, and so that's just one example of the types of questions that we're hoping that we could answer with research just because we have this data in a consistent and therefore comparable format. So these are some of the other questions that we were kind of thinking would be super useful to answer um, with research based on this. And obviously we're totally open. We have a research department. We're totally open to other people coming up with questions and, and kind of telling us the, the sorts of things that they really want to be answering. Um, the cleverest thing, though, is if someone has built something to consume this data and like push out research or kind of display the data or use the data like the parliamentary monitoring sites, for example, and they've done that as an open source project, then anyone here in this room would be able to use it without really needing to be able to do too much to the code. And that's pretty neat, right? So... <laughs> What's next for every politician? Well, if you have any data, uh, past or present data, as I've said a number of times already, um, <laughs> that you want to integrate, please get in touch and we can help you do that. Um, please also let us know if you've used the data to do research, to build tools or enhance existing sites. We're always really keen to hear how it's been used and more crucially, what you guys need to make things better, easier and faster next time. Um, and as for my society, well, we're looking for people who are interested in running lightweight parliamentary monitoring sites for their national level legislatures, people who want to track candidate data for elections, um, both local and national, um, people who are interested in working with us on grouping significant parliamentary votes into their legislature into issues, and anything else that you think this data could be used for that you're interested in. And that's me. So it's pretty short, but like, if you have any questions, please awesome. do ask. So uh, first, a round of applause, please. <laughs> All right, so uh, there's actually quite a few questions from Slido. Oh, no. And uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll be reading them out since people were very interestingly all typing in English. So there's no Yay. need for, for me to translate any of this. Uh, so instead, I'll translate to Chinese, I mean Mandarin. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, the first question, the first question is, Okay, so um, we scrape the data from data that is available on um, current government sites or from data sources where people are running parliamentary monitoring sites or from data that people have given us. So there's a group in um, Portugal, for example, that have somehow gotten hold of the Portuguese data. Um, they're not really publishing it publicly anywhere, but they are sending it to us so that we can put it onto our site. Um, so that's that's how we get it in. We don't key it in manually. We do use scrapers. Sorry, James. 
Okay, and that leads naturally to the next question. 下一个问题就是说，那既然你们都是自动从网页上，这些网页可能 Google 都找不到，可是你们想办法找到了。那这样子想必是要写程式啊。那可是写程式，如果网页它的格式改了呢？那所以大概多久会呃需要手动去调整一次？还是说大部分时候你们写了，其实它就一直 run 下去？ Um, so the first thing I should say is that there is no database.、Um, if you go to the site, it is literally just JSON files and CSV files. So there, there's absolutely no database involved in any of this.、Um, so the cost of maintaining it is relatively low,、um, and data kind of is out of date almost as soon as it's up there. So、um, that's the other reason you can take a, the, the JSON and the CSV formats are like a snapshot of the data at that time, and then it gets updated. So when you download it, you've got like the snapshot of it at that moment, and then like the next day when we've kind of pulled in the pull request from the scrapers, that data is probably going to have changed. In terms of scrapers breaking, I mean we're working on them every day.、Um, we have two people who are basically looking at the pull requests that are coming in, looking at the scrapers that we're running,、um, and checking them and making sure that. That those are still working, that the data hasn't changed. I mean, like you know what scrapers are like; <laughs> they they break pretty often, right? <laughs> Okay.、Uh, and the next question、uh, is more about、uh, data journalism. Because he, uh, he, just you just said, uh, actually, many of the tools we see are news media tools. That is, the news media workers can ask some very interesting questions. And these questions, you can only do research in one country. But now, because everyone uses the same method, so here you can do a comparison of the data that you have to do a global comparison or a global comparison. So, of course, there is the biggest one in the world. 一个案子就是巴拿马文件。那在巴拿马文件里面，我们知道不只是有政治人物的资料，也有他们的钱的资料，然后还有他们的家族的相关的钱的资料以及这些东西。那当这些资料取得或者出现的时候，这是你们 Every Politician 会试着要呃引入或者是连接的资料吗？ Um, so at the moment, we don't include any other data other than the data about the politicians. So we don't have data for the associates or family members.、Um, we would love to do things like link it up to open corporates so that you could check、uh, whether they've got any kind of political、um, or not political、um, business interests, for example,、um, outside that could that could kind of have a bearing on the way that they vote, for example. Um, but those are things that will come in the future,、um, and when people request them from us. So we basically we're working on a, a basis of when when people come and ask us for something based on this data, then we're like, okay, cool, that's the next thing we should do. Right. So it's pull request driven. So,、um, 就是那就是有人跳坑的话，他就会就是变得越来越厉害。那下一个问题，呃，是说。呃，如果这些资料刚刚已经讲到是说资料它呃是从网站上抓下来，这个抓网站已经有两个全职的人去保证它资料格式是没有错的。可是如果资料内容有错呢？如果那个被寄到的那个呃政治家他其实并不是这样子，但是那个网站就是你们作为来源的那个网站其实有事实上的错误，那这些想必是需要有当地经验的人才能够呃去去纠正嘛，或者是去调整。那这个是有怎么样的一个机制呢？ Um, so I don't really know what we actually do to make sure the data is correct.、Um, if there's any way of validating it,、um, this is one of the questions that I would normally throw to my colleague Dave, who is not here.、Um, but、uh, if you grab me afterwards, I can give you my card. Whoever asked that question, and、um, I can put you in touch with Dave and Tony, who who basically look after all of that, and they can tell you whether there's any specific method of validating the data. 好，所以这个问题需要 call out。那欢迎这个讲，就是这一场 session 之后，这个来找郑，然后 call out。那下一个问题是说。呃，这些东西事实上是所谓公民的监督。那我们在公民监督的时候，通常是说政治家没有那么想要被监督，但是我们想各种方法去监督他们。那有没有什么方式，或者你们在全世界有哪些国家有合作过？是有什么动机让这些政府主动的去把你们想要的资料、想要的栏位就用这个格式公开出来？你们就不用再写程式啦、啊，去抓啦、啊？有这样子的一种例子吗？ Um, so this is a really good question.、Uh, 
if there's any incentive for politicians or governments to get better about publishing the lists or whether it's going to be something that's always done to them. I don't know. I would hope that they become better over time um, about publishing the lists. Like that, that would be our hope. And because we're scraping data from official sources mainly at the moment, like that's something that would be really useful for us as well, um, for them to actually get better about publishing it. Um, what we're kind of hoping to do at the moment is with these lightweight parliamentary monitoring sites is create really good trusted official sources um, that almost do what we've kind of done with They Work For You in the UK, which is force the UK government to become better mm. at publishing their data, at putting their data out there, because we've spent 11 years poking them in the face with a parliamentary <laughs> monitoring site that works better. Um, and that, that the public use more because they had no idea how to use the government site. So I think that's kind of, that's the ethos behind it, and that's why Tony is so interested in this, um, is that we want this to work elsewhere as well and we figure like if we have the data you guys have the local knowledge you can do that poking you can like create the site in a matter of like hours do that poking and and kind of go ahead and and force them to be better about this okay so i'll translate it to english for you thank you uh, <laughs> So uh, on, on your website currently, it's all in Latin letters, uh, that is to say ASCII, um, translate more or less. And then in many uh, scripts, there's uh, a lot of homonyms in which that when translated to Latin scripts, the, the, the names conflict into each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the problem is that uh, without the local script, like in Arabic or in mm -hmm. Chinese or, or whatever, uh, there's there's very uh, a, a lot of ambiguity so mm -hmm. that you don't actually know which of this name it is about. And we actually have a lot of that, that problem with the Panama Papers mm -hmm. also. So uh, are, are you try, uh, offering some kind of internationalization or what, what, what's your take on this? So actually internationalization and, and accepting other scripts is something that is definitely on our critical path. Um, we haven't done it yet. It's a resource problem for us, um, <laughs> as with all of these things. Um, so yeah, yes, we do want to do it. It's not available at the moment. We hopefully will get around to it. Um, but we do have unique identifiers for people in every politician. So if you go in there and you see in a data set that there's two people that are the same person and we've got them as two different people, then just let us know and then we can make sure the unique identifier um, associates those two people with just being one person. Okay, um, so about this, I think you already answered. It's two full-timers, right? Uh, well, so... Just so uh, we have a team of five people that work on the general theme of mm -hmm. parliaments um, and democracy at my society, of which I'm one of them, um, and I'm not technical, and I definitely don't do anything to do with scraping. Um, but uh, we have Tony, who pretty much updates the scrapers every morning, and then we have um, a colleague of his, Chris, who helps Tony with the building of the site. So those are the two main people that work on it, and then there's Dave, who does the bot blogging. Okay. Right. Uh, now,下一个问题是说，可不可以直接开一个CSV或者JSON出来？那这个，对，you and um, we already have this. And um, all right. So, so what, what's your what's your downstream? Uh, who, who who's your upstream? You know, some uh, big journal is actually using this thing as reference data. You just already showed some, but that's like more of a one-time analysis or report or something. Some people are actually repeatedly using your data. Are you their users? So, um, the the point about the CSV file and the JSON file is that we have no idea who's using it. We have no idea who's using it. Um, so we have literally no oversight of, for example, whether open spending is, is taking care of, like, like is, is using every politician data, or we have no idea like who is using it. We, ha we heard a rumor that um, some of the people that were doing the Panama Papers release were using every politician data to check, but we can't verify that. 
Uh, there's no way to do it. And that was part of the point of it. We don't want to necessarily have an oversight of, of who's using it. The data should be available for you guys to freely use. Why should we have to know what you're doing? So no, there is no oversight. Like we, we love it if you email us and tell us what you're doing because that's awesome because then we can be like, hey, it was used in this really cool thing. And then when we come, when like people like me come to conferences to talk, then you know, I can tell you guys what cool stuff's been done with it. But you know, if you don't want to tell us and you just want to use it, that is also absolutely fine. No, no, so like I just said, we like we don't take care of any other projects. Um, people can literally do what they want with the data. Like it's absolutely fine. We we have literally no oversight and we're completely happy with it that way. That's That is the million dollar question, quite literally. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, funding is not easy. Funding is never easy. Um, we have applied for funding a number of times. We are currently doing this without funding, um, just because this is part of what my society does. Um, we would love it if people would give us money for it. I think it's a hard sell uh, because, you know, governments don't want to fund stuff that might actually expose them doing something bad eventually. Um, and philanthropic donors probably don't want to spend too much time pissing off governments that might be giving them tax breaks. Not that I should be saying things like that. So um, yeah, funding is, funding is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we haven't thought about doing anything like that. I think because of the data that we're taking at the moment, it's relatively surface level, so it's not, um, you know, like we're looking at kind of Twitter handles, Facebook profiles, contact details that are kind of readily available, like, you know, email addresses and stuff like that. Um, so at the moment, I don't think it's something that any politician would think, you know, Oh, they'll, they'll probably think like, oh, well, that data is just out there on the internet. It's just that we've gathered it all into one place. So it's easily downloadable and reusable. Um, maybe in the future when the data source is a bit richer, we might look at doing something like that. But currently, it's not something that we do. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Another round of applause.